He know how to take you from the back and bring you to the front when he's ready. Because Elijah was in the back of the room. And he wasn't trying to make no big fella out of himself. But God wanted to make a big fella out of him. And reached over everybody in the class and brought Elijah to the front. Farrakhan was sitting in the back of the ministers. Finally, the messenger said, Brother, why do you hide behind the sycamore tree? Come on out front and sit down in the seat. And he was trying to get a brother got up so he could sit down. He said, no, no, I don't want you in that seat. Sit in this one. Sit in my seat. See, he's done created one, and that one, the Quran, is the root of him. But the honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Master Barak Muhammad told him there's another man. And he's got to fulfill one third of this book. And the messenger said, I'm going to let that fellow take care of his part. That's exactly what he's doing right now with the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. People are looking for him to just walk the exact same way that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad walked. But he's got one third of this book to fulfill. And he said, I'm going to let him do his work. I'm going to focus on mine. Give me this. Solomon has been given this, and Solomon was David's heir. Now, if we walk in, in the volume of the book, then we can see Solomon's life touching the life of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. And if Solomon's life don't touch the life of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, then hell, reading about Solomon is irrelevant. They were already cooking up a plan. I remember sitting four hours with Minister Jeremiah Shabazz. He had told me, he realized they were already cooking up a plan to put leadership in over the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and say, even if he lives, he's too old, it's time for some new leadership. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad bears witness to it. He says it in the theology of time. He said, there are some saying a younger man needs to take my place. He said, the place I'm in, I didn't even give to myself. This is where God has placed me. How somebody else going to remove me and elect somebody else? What is the basis for this election? What's the basis for removing me? You think we don't think like that? We thought like that then? They're thinking like that right now. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad got way out of heaven in 1972. He said, this is my minister who don't mind going into New York City, a wicked city and preach and uh, he's our national minister and we can hear him every week and uh, when you see him, look at him. When you hear him, listen to him. Is that what he said? This is 72. He way out ahead of them and the plot so that by the time they come up with a leader, it's already planted in the minds of hearers now. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad pointed to the one that he was saying was his minister. He had already sat in his seat that's exactly what David did before all Israel, so that they would know that Solomon was his choice. The other man was their choice, but Solomon was his choice. That means that something in Solomon's life touches the life of the Honorable Louis Park. So Solomon had been given the speech of birds, and we have granted all things. Surely this is manifest grace. Here we go. And his host of the jinn. Now who are they? See, these are people coming out of the mountains. They, they, the Quran teaches you these are the mountainous tribes. Now, we've been saying the Caucasus Mountains. Right. We've been saying the caves and the hillsides of Europe. See, ultimately, Yaqub's children had to come out of the caves. We ain't never really had a discussion about when they came. We willing to accept that we ran them in there. Yeah, but they ran out of there one day. How did they get around the world? over the politics, the economics, the social standing, and the spiritual teaching of man. See, they come out of the caves, they came among Solomon, and he fettered them in chains, right? The Quran says, and he put them into service to help him rebuild the temple. He got a host of gin. Well, what you gonna use them for, Solomon? We're gonna use them to help build the temple. Well, what temple are you building? You said this was related to Farrakhan. 
Well, he had to call some of them to help rebuild Mas Marion. So he rededicated Mas Marion. You remember that? Yes. And he said it was written that Solomon called the Jinn to help. So they came in and helped with some of the stonework there, the granite and everything. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that they came out and they were stone cutters and blah, blah, blah. Pardon me. And uh, they helped them to rebuild another temple. But there's also a scripture that says, and they were building. And you could not hear the sound of hammer nor chisel, yet they were working in the quarry. Now what kind of building was going on then? That you can't hear the sound of the hammer hitting the chisel as you are cutting stone and shaping stone. Because see, that's stone work now that you're doing in the building of the temple. See, the real temple is here. Where the indwelling spirit of God is. And the scripture says, be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by what? A renewing of the mind. Who is going to help Farrakhan to renew the mind of those that desire to be with him and to qualify for the next kingdom? There has to be a work of repairing the mind and getting the mind so the jinn are helping him. Today the jinn are in the church of Scientology. And they're helping Farrakhan to help now rebuild the mind. They owe us something. I'm talking about the Caucasian people for what they have done to us. And they should be involved in the repair. The honorable boy Elijah Muhammad did not turn his back from them. He said, help us with 25 years of financial support while we go and build something for ourselves. So here he has the gym. So now a man has learned a science of how to help us feed better from the material that can renew our minds. And now a clamor has rose up. What are we doing with white folks? I think it was Savior's Day 1974, Lincoln Rockwell was talking. You can't get no more white than Lincoln Rockwell. The Nazi party. He talking at our Savior's Day. And, uh, um, Rockwell is talking, and it's a deafening silence there. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad interrupts him, comes over to the mic, and tells us, when you hear the truth, you bear witness to the truth. That's right. <laughs> See, everybody's knowing that he's a he's an avowed kind of racist, so don't nobody want to be bearing witness to him, but what he was saying was the truth. White women need to stay right over there. Black women need to stay with their men. We want you all to be with your folks. We'll be with our folks and them. Well, that was right. That was the truth. That's what the messenger was teaching, separation. And if we're going to be righteous, we should be separated here. They should be separated there. Like no white folks have ever been around us. Come on, man. Then there were some white skinned men sitting up on the stage. He said, now they came, they wanted the 74. Yeah. They came, they didn't come to see where you dressed in white and all this the uniform. They came to see where you dressed in the principles. Come on. Right. Right. Now, Rick Murray, your favorite. These weren't black men sitting up there. These were white skinned men sitting up there. Right. That's hidden from us. And we have a man that's giving it to us, and we about to blow it because people are trying to use, ah, oh, he's around white people. We shouldn't be around him. You, you, you around him because you work for him. You bought your little computer that you're typing all this garbage up on the internet, you got that from him. You know, you got all your little YouTube stuff, you got that from him. You're with white people every day, but Farrakhan not supposed to deal with them. He know how to deal more intelligently with them. He know how to get something out of them. You ain't got a damn thing but a check. And when you go and cash it, you're going to get the money right back to them. Hell, you don't need Farrakhan. The last thing you need to be doing is trying to attack him. 